Revenue Cat has released their state of subscription apps for 2025, and it's jam packed with valuable information. It's 262 pages, so it's a lot, but so much valuable information if you're trying to make money from your app. Things like what subscription duration are being sold the most within your category, right? Is it weekly, monthly, annual? In your category, are apps typically offering free trials? And if they are, what is the length of that trial? Is it a couple days, a week, a month? What percentage goes from trial to paid? What is the average revenue per install? What does retention look like in each category? And so much more. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through some of the data that I found most interesting, give you my thoughts on it, but you can also hear Jacob, the CEO of RevenueCat, and David Barnard, a developer advocate at RevenueCat, talk through this whole report in a 45 minute long podcast. And this isn't sponsored, they just put out an awesome report and I wanted to share it. So let's dive in. Now, the first thing I always do with a report like this is dive into the methodology because anytime a report comes out like this or any headline in the news, you know, quoting a study, always look at the methodology to look at what data that study was based off of. So here's the methodology section in the report. Let's talk about the scope of apps included. We included apps that have active subscription revenue meet a minimum threshold of installs or revenue to ensure statistically meaningful findings and have integrated revenue cat. So this eliminates that whole graveyard of side projects that never really made any money. So you have to have a certain number of installs and are making a little bit of money to be included in this report. So what is the size and composition? That equaled over 75,000 apps across all categories, right? Health, fitness, productivity, over 10 billion in revenue with more than a billion transactions. So pretty large sample size. You're probably gonna get pretty accurate data here. All right, let's go back up to the executive summary, which are, you know, some big headline numbers. Uh, we all know this. AI apps print money, but only if they stand out. So about 63 cents per install after 60 days. But AI alone won't drive success. Differentiation does, right? There's a whole lot of AI slop out there. You got to separate yourself from that. But if you do, again, they print money. Uh, subscriptions aren't enough anymore. 35% of apps now mix subscriptions with consumables or a lifetime purchase. Now, Consumables, I typically think of with games, but obviously, you know, with AI and tokens, because that's how these LLMs charge for the services. So a lot of apps, you can, you can buy tokens to do more AI requests. So that's where consumables come in. Churn hits hard and fast. Nearly 30% of annual subscriptions are canceled in the first month. So retention starts on day one. Don't think that you can start your retention efforts when they're about to renew a year later. They're probably already gone by then. So start retention day one, because 30% of your annual subscriptions don't renew. Low prices keep users locked in. Most apps with cheap annual plans keep up to 36% of their users subscribed after a year. That's good. High price monthly plans, only 6.7% stick around. So get them in your annual plan if you can, no matter what the price. And then lastly, the gap between the winners and the rest is growing. This has been long known on the app store. The conventional thinking here is that it's very hard to make money from indie apps like on the app store. And that's because you know, a lot of the bottom apps don't make money, but the top apps make all the money. So if you get into that top group, it's very good, very lucrative, but man, it's, it's pretty hard to get into that group. And this gap has grown significantly since last year's 200X. So it's getting harder and harder to break through, but if you do, things are good. So like I said, it's over 262 pages. I am not gonna go page by page. There's a couple pieces of data that I wanted to highlight. So let's start with trial duration by category. And that was on page 37. So I'm gonna scroll down to 37. Again, we're gonna jump around here, but I thought this was interesting. Trial durations by category. So are people offering a couple day trials, a week long trial, two week trial, month long trial per category? And again, there's some variation in this data here. Gaming, look, 96.3% are four days or less. Kind of makes sense for gaming. But look, health and fitness, most of them are five to nine days. It's probably a one week trial. But you can go through your category and see where most of the trial periods are. Now, the thing I found interesting is that almost all of them, look, if you look at the orange bar and the indigo bar, that makes up almost 100% no matter what category you're in. So if you look at that, that's nine days or less. So the obvious trend is that having a, a week long trial is probably the way to go. Now, median entertainment at 9.3% of 17 to 32, Two days, but still that's not a big number. Like look, this orange bar and the green bar are very small, pretty much on any category. So I don't know, I thought that was interesting that the vast, vast majority of trials are nine days or less. Now let's go to what type of subscriptions are sold. So here, share subscriptions sold by category. Again, weekly, monthly, yearly, what categories are selling what type of subscriptions? And the big chunks of colors are like what jump out at me and the small slivers of colors. So gaming, pretty much all of them are selling weekly trials. Uh, health and fitness, most of them are annual, 66.6%, .6 and only a sliver down here are weekly. Same thing with education, that's almost never weekly, it's you know mostly annual. 
But business, interestingly enough, that's mostly weekly. So you'd have to dive into this. And I do want to say about this report at the end, they dive into each category, like business, education, gaming, and do a deep dive, get more granular per category. What I'm showcasing is kind of like the big overview picture. So if you are building, let's say a business app, an education app, you want to dive into that section and thoroughly go through that. But we're keeping a big picture for this overview. So this was share of subscriptions sold by category, but you also have it by geography. Now, I think this is all kind of the same, nothing too interesting here. Let me back up here and, and clarify this. There's a couple different ways to look at this too. You can look at it from an indie developer's perspective where, you know, maybe you don't have a ton of users. Or if you're looking at this from a large app that has millions and millions of users, well, in that case, every little percentage matters. So yeah, I just kind of nonchalantly said, ah, this is all kind of the same data because there's not a lot of fluctuation in it between like yearly, monthly, weekly. But again, that's from the indie developer's perspective. If your app has tens and tens of millions of users, these small percentages matter immensely. All right, the next one I found super interesting was the days to revenue milestone. So I believe that was on 65, no, 66 here. So median number of days from launch to revenue milestones. That's 1,000 MRR, 2,500 MRR, 5,000 MRR, and 10,000 MRR. Now, for the apps that make it there, that's the key. What this data is showing is that of the apps that actually hit 1,000 MRR, how long did it take them to get there? Of the apps that actually hit 10,000 MRR, how long did it take them to get there? Obviously, there's a whole bajillion apps that never see 1,000 MRR or definitely 10,000 MRR. So keep that in mind with these percentages. If an app does hit these numbers, here's the median of how many days it took them to do that per category two, which is interesting. So you see the orange bar is 1,000 MRR. And what's the quickest here? It looks like gaming is the quickest, which is you know not shocking. They're the quickest to like all the milestones. So if you do have a game that takes off and hits, it usually hits pretty quick. Let's look at the slower burns. It looks like shopping more of a slower burn for pretty much all the milestones. Travel is a little bit of a slower burn. So the shorter bars are categories where if you do hit those numbers, it can happen quickly. Now there's pros and cons to that, right? If it happens quickly, it could go away quickly. Uh, if it's a slow burn, that's usually more of a sign of a healthier business, but that is being very stereotypical. There's obviously exceptions on both sides of that, but I thought this was an interesting stat. And then similarly, share of newly launched apps that hit revenue milestones in their first two years. So this is the percentage of apps that actually hit 1000 MRR or hit 2500 MRR, again, within the category. So if you have an app ID in mind and you're gonna launch in one of these categories, here's a good indicator of what percentage of apps hit 1000 MRR, 10,000 MRR, et cetera. But again, remember the methodology. Again, this is why the methodology is so important. This isn't every app that is ever launched, right? In order for an app to be included in this report, it has to be making at least some revenue and have some level of downloads. So that eliminates a whole long tail of apps that do absolutely nothing, right? So keep that in mind when looking at these percentages. And you can go category by category. So the leader here for 1000 MRR is photo and video. Almost 30% of apps uh, that get some revenue, remember, because that's what you have to do to get included, will hit 1000 MRR. And photo and video is also the leader at 8.75% to hit 10,000 MRR. So it looks like photo and video is a pretty lucrative app category. So I thought this was pretty useful information. Again, if you have an app idea, you're thinking of launching, this is a nice data point when accessing the likelihood of success within your category. Now, before you can get any of these MRR milestones, you have to get people from trial to paid. So what is that like? I believe that's back up here on page nine. Told you I was jumping around a little bit. Well, not nine, uh, 10. So down, or you go download the trial. So how many downloads turn into a trial? And then you can go how many trials turn into paid. And you can see those percentages in this report, not only per category, again, you see the categories here, but also per geography because that matters too. So here you can see download the trial by category. Now these candle charts are broken down into quartiles. So like the bottom wick of the candle is the bottom, you know, the lower 25th percentile. And then the top is actually the top 90th percentile. And then you got the mid quartiles uh, in here at the top of the candle and the bottom of the candle. They explain how to read this in the methodology section, but I'm just gonna, again, point out the highlights. So you can't just blanketly say that, oh, health and fitness starts the most trials because that is the upper 90%, the best of the best. So you can compare yourself against that if you think you have the capability of getting there, or you can look at like, okay, what, what do the worst do? How do they do? And maybe, maybe set your expectations low at the floor. But anyway, it's valuable information to see the typical download to trial rate by each category. And then you also have it, or here's hard paywall versus freemium. So you can see hard paywalls get that day zero conversion because they have no other choice. They either start a trial or they exit the app. So you do get that day zero conversion, but as time goes on, here you see week six or later, freemium starts to convert a lot more than hard paywall, which kind of makes sense, right? Because a hard paywall can't really do anything in the app, so they may never come back. 
But, you know, there's no right answer. It's a hard paywall right or it's freemium right. You know, it's it's the right answer for your app. And the best thing to do, it, it's such a, it always sounds like such a cop-out answer. Oh, just test it for your app and see which one works better. But like, that is the answer. Everyone just wants the, hey, what should I do? Tell me the right answer. The truth is no one knows. You got to test it for your app. In fact, I'm doing that right now with Creator View. I am testing out a hard paywall. That release should go out in a couple of days. It's not out currently. Curious to see how that goes because right now I'm freemium and I'm not really converting all that much. So I'm hoping to see an increase in conversions with the hard paywall. So I am testing that myself. But you also get downloaded trial by geography. So like what regions typically start a trial from the download. You have it by price point, right? Higher prices correlate to high, higher trial conversion rates. Kind of makes sense, right? If it's a super cheap price point app, you're gonna get a lot of downloads, not a lot of conversions. So that's gonna affect your percentage. If it's an expensive app, you probably have more high intent users. So that conversion percentage is going to be higher, even though the absolute number is probably lower. So again, this is just a taste of the kind of information, download the trial, then you have trial to paid. Then there's, if I scroll down a bit, there's pricing, medium price per plan duration by category. So what's the median weekly, monthly, annual for a business app, a gaming app, health and fitness. Now, of course, you know, do what is right for your app. But if you're curious, you know, what the median prices are, here you go. But then also by geography, right? So you should be changing your prices by geography. Now, again, this is where the indie dev mindset versus the big company mindset has different answers, right? Because if you're an indie developer, just use like the Big Mac index, the Netflix index, you know, follow their ratios and just adjust your prices in each region according to that. Like that's the simple low hanging fruit. To me, that's the bare minimum an indie dev can do. It's pretty easy to do. Now, again, if your app has millions and millions and millions of users and these small percentages points, a small price change matters, then you probably want to get more specific in each region to price it accordingly rather than just using a blanket, you know, Netflix index. But here's some data on the median price per plan duration. And yeah, I think that was the last thing I want to show you. Yeah, we're back to share of subscriptions. But that was just a taste. There's so much more. There are sections on retention, acquisition, Google Play versus the App Store cross-platform development and how that has been growing with AI. There's a lot more React Native developers out there that are using AI to help them build iOS apps. And those apps are out there making money. So we're seeing that growth. And like I said, the second half of the report is drilling down into each individual category, like health and fitness, productivity, business, to get even more granular with the data. So I highly recommend diving into your category for your app to see that data. So if you're trying to make money from your apps, go download this report. The link is in the description. Grab a coffee, take a couple hours, really read through it. Go through your category. It is well worth your time.